Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Now, during fetal development, the brain and spinal cord are formed by the closing of a narrow sheath. The process is usually wrapped up by the 28th day of pregnancy. However, if there are hitches in the process, it results in what is called neural tube defects. And one of these neural tube defects is spina bifida. Spinal bifida occurs when there is incomplete closure of the spine and membranes around the spinal cord of the embryo during early pregnancy. My guest is a consultant neurosurgeon at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, a lecturer at the Department of Surgery, Lagos State University College of Medicine, and a board member of the Health Emergency Initiative, Dr. Laulu Akimbo. You are welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. So, the closure is not complete. As a result, some of the spinal matter is protruding or almost protruding from the back. What are the implications of having part of the spinal cord displaced from the body? Okay, so uh, the, the closure of this neural tube being incomplete um, allows uh, the spinal cord and the contents of the spinal canal to have a chance to uh, protrude. Now, when this happens, you know, the spinal cord is then exposed to an environment which it is unfamiliar with, like the amniotic fluid okay. uh, in utero. That's uh, okay, during yes, pregnancy. Okay, yes, it happens within the womb. Okay. Yes, it does happen within the womb. So, uh, with that, uh, there is um, uh, involvement of the spinal cord uh, such that it creates a dysfunction of the spinal cord itself. Is it because of the protrusion alone? Because, or of, because the, of the protrusion and interaction with the fluid? Interaction with the fluid, uh, essentially. Because it's uh, a different chemical environment to what the spinal it's cord. Toxic. Yes, it, it, it is. The amniotic uh, fluid consists of uh, substances that are usually not uh, exposed, uh, to which the cord is not exposed to. And also, even after bath, uh, the wound that we see at the back of such babies is actually the spinal cord exposed. It's not a skin wound. So spinal cord is exposed to the exterior, to the atmosphere. Uh, and okay, in this, you know, in this piece of tissue, yes. in this part of the body that is exposed, I know that there will be involvement of nerves. Yes. Probably involvement of uh, blood vessels. Oh, yes. Probably involvement of bones. Definitely. So, so how does this affect the child for pain and, you know, uh, feeling and stuff like that? Okay, so um, three major functions of the spinal cord really uh, is motor control as the control of power to our muscles. Uh, it also transmits sensations from various parts of our bodies and takes it to the brain. And then it also have autonomic uh, functions, uh, part of which is uh, the control of our uh, anus and urine uh, oh, continents. So there can be problems with bowel so function. All these can have issues. So a baby will have uh, is likely to have uh, problems with sensations, perception of sensation from the affected part of the body. Uh, difficulty with moving the muscles and the limbs and also continence issues uh, both with urine and uh, feces also. Can this thing be prevented? Yes, uh, it can be prevented. In fact, uh, uh, several research have shown that uh, if uh, women of childbearing age uh, uh, take uh, folic acid that uh, there is a huge decrease uh, in the incidence of uh, uh, spinal bifida. bifida. Yes. When we say women of childbearing age, we're talking about women as young as 18, not necessarily pregnant women. Yes. Why, why must it be so early? Okay. Is it uh, you're trying to 
just be careful just in case she gets pregnant or you're uh, building up something in her essentially it's about building up really uh it's about building up uh, what, what we encourage will be is that uh, uh, women of childbearing age should eat proper diet that contains folic acid okay so that um, they can build up reserves okay but also it is uh, advised that uh, women who are expecting to take in uh -huh. should uh, say matter of necessity be on folic uh, acid uh, supplements. Are also. the dosages different for somebody who is just of childbearing age and for somebody who is planning to have a baby? Essentially, uh, the intake of uh, folate tablets uh, is for people who are expecting to take in. That is okay. our experience so yes. far, yes. So the dose uh, is about 400 micrograms per day, recommended dose, really. That's one tablet. Just that uh, little that yellow tablet. Yes. It's is actually going lower to than... prevent all this havoc. It's likely to prevent it. It's likely to prevent it. Oh, yes. Okay, speaking about likely, I hear that there are some women who have a problem not, not of ingestion of folic acid, but of absorption of it that they have bad absorption of folic acid is there a way of actually determining how much folic acid a woman has absorbed if it is enough if it is uh, of the kind of amount that can prevent such a problem ah uh, yes of course uh, laboratory testing can be done uh, to assess uh, uh, such in uh, the serum of uh, such women uh, that can be assessed but i have a feeling that these tests are not routinely done they are not routinely done you know uh, yes uh, and most people haven't heard that somebody might have a problem with absorption not really ingestion so if a woman is told look if you take folic acid chances are high that you won't have this kind of baby yes and she's taking it mm -hmm. but then she has that kind of baby because She's not absorbing what she's taking. Yes. What would be the solution to such a thing? Okay. Um, uh, the solution to such after appropriate uh, testing is, uh, is to uh, have such a woman, maybe we can infuse it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, into such a person. But this particular... Um, group of people you are referring to, there are very uh, few in the population. So uh, it does not uh, bring up the question of uh, having such to be tested routinely okay. uh, in the so population. So it's not a regular problem. In, in, it's not the everyday sort yes, of problem. Yes, most people on. will have good absorption of uh, food. Since this happens, let's say, you know, something goes wrong, and the baby is going to be born with spina bifida. Um, can it be detected before the child is born? Definitely. Um, there are uh, tests that are done. Uh, primarily, uh, routinely, we advise uh, pregnant women to have uh, uh, prenatal ultrasound scanning done. Prenatal? Yes. Is this a new development? Because uh, No. That's ultrasound scanning during pregnancy. Okay. Okay. To have ultrasound okay, scanning. Okay, during, during pregnancy, not before pregnancy. Not, not before All pregnancy, right. yeah. So, when this is done, especially around the second trimester, uh, uh, spina bifida can be detected. Okay. Uh, can, can it be treated in utero to reduce the effects of its interaction with amniotic fluid? Uh, pretty difficult. Uh, those are still uh, things that are in uh, research stage does in utero uh, treatment of uh, things like uh, myelomeningocele spinal bifida uh, is not a routine that's thing. the worst type uh, where yes, it pops that's... out and it's exposed oh yes yes okay so uh, the routine practice is to have those babies uh, delivered uh, and then treat them when they 
have been born, really. And then there are other investigations that can be done okay. uh, during pregnancy also. Blood tests for alpha fetoprotein. Those are some of the chemicals that helps us to detect uh, uh, neurotube uh, defect. And uh, also acetylcholinesterase. Um, these are our own uh, magic medical terminologies anyway. But these are chemicals that are uh, elaborated, expressed when um, there is a spina bifida. Uh, these tests are advised to be done uh, at the second trimester. Uh, okay, so there's, n there's not much hope for uh, an operation within the womb while the child is there. It's not something that is commonly done, right? It's not routinely done. But no. it's done after the child has been oh, yes. born. Mm. Now, this child is growing. You've covered the neural tube now with, you know, skin or whatever, whatever you do during the operation, but it's covered, right? Does this improve outcomes? Does it halt, you know, the progression of this spina bifida by doing an operation in time? Okay, uh, uh, let me go back to your question. Uh, the surgery entails uh, getting the usual covering of the spinal cord back into place. Okay. We try to place the spinal cord back into the spinal canal and then cover it with uh, what we call meninges and then... And those skin. things are readily available they are in there. the child? They are there. Uh, actually, they are there. It's just that they were left open. Okay. They were supposed to be closed. Okay. So we cover the spinal cord uh, with all those things. Uh, the meninges and also the skin. Uh, now, if these uh, such surgeries are done early, okay, the functional outcome of such uh, patients may be better. Okay? okay. However, the damage to the spinal cord is already done. Okay. Such may likely not be reversed as it were okay by the surgery the essential indication for uh, operating on these babies with uh, spinal bifida uh, is to prevent infection of the spinal the, cord uh, spinal cord and the brain and that could be really bad oh yes and also to improve the cosmesis the beauty of the back of i the mean child. it's easy for uh, a mother to show the back of his, I mean, her baby uh, in public, if there is only a scar rather than a bulge. Okay. Uh, yeah. That so is true. for cosmesis, to prevent infection, we do uh, such surgeries. Uh, it also helps uh, to a certain extent. With, to improve uh, the outcome of to, that child. Yes. Uh, because now, it's now the worse child that was scrolling across late. the screen okay. has an uncommonly large head. Okay. Is that, why, why does that happen? What's, what's happening there? So what we call neural tube defect um, involves both the brain and the spinal cord. This, it involves the brain, the spine, which is the backbone, and the spinal cord. Okay. So when these things occur, they are not actually a standalone event. Mm. They are actually accompanying defects in the brain. So one of those uh, issues that may happen in the brain is hydrocephalus from... Which is the large head. Which uh, creates the large head. Okay. Okay. Hydrocephalus is essentially an imbalance between the production and the absorption. Production, flow, and absorption of the brain water, which we call the a cerebral spinal, spinal fluid. fluid. Yes. So, so what's happening there is that there's excess um, cerebral no. spinal fluid or what? Uh, not really. It's a, it's a problem with the flow. Okay. It's a problem with the absorption. So it creates a backlog of fluid in the brain. And with okay. the backlog, you know, the brain is consistently producing the fluid. Uh, so if it's not flowing out regularly as it ought to, then it's sort of dammed back. And then that bloats up the brain and then the skull also. What do you do? Uh, you know, I'm going to ask you about treatment options. Okay. Apart from that um, surgery for the head and other things right after the break. Please stay with us. We'll talk about spina bifida after the break.
Hello, thanks for staying with us. 0805-468-3514 is the number to call if you have questions. That's 0805-468-3514. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A for your questions on spina bifida. We were talking about treatment options. There's also a problem with the feet in there. It looks like the child has club feet. So what would be the intervention for such a child to live as normal a life as possible? Okay, so we have to put the treatment in perspective, really. You know, the, the spinal bifida is not uh, just a problem of uh, the spinal cord and the spine. It's a complex problem. It okay. affects the brain. It affects the feet. Uh, there might be heart issues. There might be uh, oh, wow. kidney issues. Uh, Congenital problems uh, okay. in these uh, babies. Okay, so it demands a, a multi-specialty approach. It's not just uh, a patient to be managed uh, by uh, surgeons. As a matter of fact, uh, the surgeons' uh, part of the treatment uh, might actually be relatively uh, limited to uh, that period which you operate. Uh, it's a lifelong issue. So, Let, let's quickly take Usman from Adamawa before we continue. Hello, Usman. Hello. Hello. What's your question? I can hear you. I can hear you. It's Usman from Adamawa State. You're welcome. What's your question? Thank you. Uh, I want to ask Doctor regarding spinal cord issues. Go ahead. Uh, some conditions regarding the issue of the spinal cord. Uh, one of my friends here in Adama had the same problem. When lifting the heavy load, so he got a problem regarding the spinal cord. He could not even move in a straight manner he used to. So he was advised by medical expertise that he should go to high up level hospitals for medication. But he did that, yet he is suffering from the same problem. So I don't know, maybe doctor can say something about it, possibly advice which may leak something positive. Thank you so much, Usman. I can tell you for free that that is not spinal bifida, That's not bifida. but there is an injury to the spinal cord. Yeah, maybe uh, this particular patient maybe had uh, some sleep disc or... Uh, I don't know. I think he, that patient needs proper assessment. Uh, in a, in a hospital, either by an orthopod, an orthopedic uh, surgeon who is uh, uh, knowledgeable in spine, or probably some surgeon. imaging tests uh, to see yes, what yes. the spine he, exactly he needs looks like. Proper uh, diagnosis uh, of his uh, condition. All right, so that's it, Usman. Let him seek another opinion from a specialist. Um, so we were talking about. Multi-dimensional problems. Oh yes, yeah. so we we it, it's we require uh, several specialists to work on this uh, patient. So, with respect to the feet issues, uh, uh, sometimes they have uh, things we call talipes equinovirus, okay, which is a feet deformity. Uh, the orthopedic surgeons uh, work on that. Uh, Various methods, uh, the basic one is to do serial castings of uh, plaster of Paris to try to straighten, to straighten the, feet. the feet. Yes, uh, it might progress to having some form of surgeries or the other. Okay. Let's quickly take Mrs. Mogaji from Benue State. Hello. Hello. You're welcome. What's the question? To speak with the people who speak on the TV. Hello? Hello? Okay, we can hear you. Go ahead. Are you going? Yes. No, I said I want to ask a question to the doctor speaking on TV. Go ahead and ask. Are you going? Ahead? Yes, please. Okay, I want to ask a question on this. Oh, I don't think you are, you are fractured on the spinal cord. How, how are you going to treat it? We don't quite understand. What's wrong with this spinal cord? 
Okay, I think we've lost her. So, you have an orthopedic surgeon working on the feet. Probably you have a, um, a renal it's expert. It's work, yes. So everybody is working on this child. Surgeons include neurosurgeon, orthopedic surgeon, urologists, nurses, physiotherapists, rehabilitation experts. Uh, all of these people have to work on uh, such pediatricians. Wow. Yes. That's oh. asking a lot. Oh, yes. So we... But then this is the case of the myo meningocell that myelomeningocele that's the the worst presentation are there not some that are easier to handle like oh yes so uh, spinal bifida has uh, two major blocks there are the open type uh, an example of which is the myelomeningocele which is the picture that you saw on the screen with the bulbous mass at the back and then there is uh, the closed there are the closed types closed types okay let's quickly let's quickly take wise Hello, Wise. Wise, could you put your TV off and ask your question quickly? Yes. You need to put your TV off so that we can hear you. Looks like we lost Wise too, but you can try again. So, we were talking about... Um, managing team managing the, the managing team so you have all these doctors working on a child yes at the end of the day what are the what are the odds that this child is actually normal for example is the brain affected in all of this since it's a spinal cord thing so in uh in almost uh, about 80 percent of them they're about uh they will have things like hydrocephalus. Uh, many of them will have some other issues with the brain. Okay. However, what, what we are looking at in terms of outcome will be uh, functionality in the society. Okay. Ability to get jobs or to even become independent, ambulate and whatever. So, um, in uh, places where care is adequate, uh, uh, quite a about 30 40 percent of them of this type of patient will eventually become uh, gainfully employed okay gainfully employed oh, yes uh, let's take the hydro hydrocephalus for example yes there's fluid going to that brain how yes. do you get it out because i know that if it keeps going there <laughs> it's not a good result every one of us have fluid going uh, how do i present everyone it's, of it's us have our out. brain producing fluid yes Okay, so for them, what we do is to find a channel through which this fluid can be coming out. Okay, okay. and that solves the problem. Two major uh, treatment modes that we do. Uh, one is endoscopic third ventriculostomy, which is uh, uh, a system in which we put a camera in and then find, uh, create a hole somewhere okay. in so the Okay, so the fluid there. is drained out. Yeah. L let's quickly see if we can get this call from Agapa. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your question? Okay, very quickly. Well done for a good one you're doing. Uh, he, has said, he, has, he has said something about, about the spine, right? That's right. And then having a split disc, right? So how, how, do you control, how do you control that? Maybe control it, what, it, exactly? Happen as a result of exercise? I'm not, I'm not getting you. Sorry? Can you repeat that? It's sleep disc, right? Sleep disc. disc. Okay, he's talking about sleep disc. Okay, okay sleep disc. Okay. okay, sleep disc. All right, thank you very much. You will answer that. That is not spinal bifida, but sleep disc. Oh, uh, well, how do you prevent that? Uh, you put uh, the disc back, right? It uh, slipped. Oh, uh, well, we just don't put the disc back. We... Uh, most of the, some of these patients will require surgery. Surgery. Yeah, uh, because okay. they will come down in pain uh, because the disc is actually pinching some nerves down there. Uh, so we have to remove uh, the disc. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so, what so here's the pain. thing. Have this patient, whoever is having a problem with the spine, go see a neurosurgeon, go to the hospital or orthopedic so surgeon. that he can be taken care of. Or yes. orthopedic surgeon. Yes. Thanks so much for coming.
And I just want to reiterate, folic acid will stop most of these things, right? It is proven that it can prevent most of it. Thank you so much for coming to the show, Dr. Akimbo. I'm so delighted to have you. And thank, thank you, you so much. much for all your calls. Everybody, have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.